Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be continuing development of our web application, incorporating what we learned in our last lesson about object methods. We're going to provide an overview of the new version of the web application, which is going to be version 6.0. We're going to provide an overview of the changes, and the changes essentially for this app, um, for this version of the application, is that we've added some uh, methods to our item and item and department uh, classes uh, that. Uh, improves the functionality of our code. Uh, and then we're going to specifically talk about the methods we've added to the item object or the item class and then the methods we've added to the department class. Uh, so basically as mentioned, um, we've just added uh, methods to both our item and department um, that's going to allow us to um, uh, learn what we used in the last lesson and also to improve the functionality of the application. For our item methods, we've added one uh, we've on one method to the item class called get image file name, um, and basically what it is, it's sort of like a helper function um, that will come because we know that an items an items image's file name is the ID of the item followed by a period followed by the the property image file extension. Um, every time we want we've been accessing, for example, trying to get the name of an item's image, we've had to concatenate those two two together, the ID and the, and the image file extension with the period in between. Well, now we can sort of create this helper function that's going to do that, one, you know, put that functionality in one function. So anytime we want the file name of an image, we just call um, that particular function. It's kind of like uh, in our last lesson when we talked about uh, the get full name method that was able to um, get the full name of a person object by combining the first name and the last name and putting it into one method so that every time you want to get the first name and the full name of a person, you don't have to uh, basically access two separate properties. You can just call um, uh, one method. Uh, so if we take a look at get image file name, uh, if we look at our item, oops, that was the last version, our uh, item class, uh, we can see that uh, here's the definition of our item class, but now we actually have a um, object method defined down here. In this case, it's called get image file name, and what you can see that it does is it simply returns a string that's the concatenation of um, the item ID of this particular instance of the object, um, concatenated with the value of image file extension. So, for example, it might be 1001 followed by a period followed by JPEG, JPG. Here you can see, uh, as we learned in our last lesson, that in order to access, that you use the this, that special variable this, to access the properties um, of a particular item, uh, of a particular instance of the item class from within um, the item methods, uh, uh, in the object's methods. Uh, so now, anytime we want the image file name, we can just uh, call this method, and we can see um, that this actually is going to be useful in two separate places. Uh, for example, in our item.php page. Um, when we output the image of our item, uh, or we called the output image function, and we manually basically extracted the item ID property of current uh, uh, of this current item that this item.php page is showing the information for. Um, you know, uh, added the the dot, and then went ahead and added the image file extension. So we're basically manually doing this operation. Now we can now that we have a function that does it for us. That simply gets replaced with a function call. Now we have cur item is, uh, and then we call get image file name. And here you notice that we use uh, this is the syntax we use for calling object methods. It's the um, the uh, dash followed by a greater than sign, and then um, the method name followed by parentheses uh, with nothing in between them if there's no parameters uh, that need to be supplied to it. And so one thing you can see already is that it kind of cleans up our code a little bit. So instead of having um, this sort of mess everywhere within our code. Now we have it um, in one file name, and all of that uh, sort of ugly code is basically consolidated to this one spot here um, within our, our item class. Additionally, we can see that because we've um, included this in the one spot, we can um, reuse this as we always do when we create functions. One of the goals of creating functions is, or methods, is functions and methods is to reuse them. So if we actually look at um, our insert item function, uh, we, one of the things that insert item function does is it moves an uploaded image file um, from the temporary directory to the images directory. Part of what it needs to do that is the file name of uh, the items, the file name of an item's image. So as you can see down here, uh, 
uh, there it is. Um, we have uh, the call to move uploaded image, um, and then uh, one of the parameters that move uploaded image takes is the image name of the file of the item. Um, and so here we can see we use this uh, get image file name object method on this particular item that you are inserting um, into the database. So as before, if we looked at the old version of this, insert item uh, in our last version, you can see down here and actually, well, uh, you can see that uh, here we have that same sort of concatenation operation done here in hand. So we sort of have this ugly code um, and now we've replaced it with a, a simple um, function call. So basically we've been able to reuse the functionality, we've been able to clean up our code a little bit. Another thing that having object methods does um, is it provides you the ability to change things. So now let's say um, we didn't want to call, let's say we decide we had a architecture decision to decide, uh, you know, we don't want to call the um, name of an item's, excuse me, the name of an item's image, um, its ID plus the file extension. Maybe we want to call it the item's name plus the file extension. Well then in every spot in our code, we'd have to go in, for example, here in item, uh, insert item, we'd have to update this so that um, here it would access the item's name um, and then we'd actually have to go to item.php and we have to update this here so that it would say current item name. So we have to replace that in, in every spot that it's used. Well, now that we've incorporated this into a function, um, we don't have to change that function call at all. All we can do is actually just go change that function's definition. So we actually could go to, and actually let me pull up the code for it. We could go to our item.php class and now, right now, it returns the item ID. All we'd have to do would be to change one line in here to name. And now, every time a function needs the file name of, uh, of an item's image, uh, it's going to get the correct um, version. So uh, that's another advantage of using object methods. Is we, and as with any functions, we can consolidate um, the, uh, the functionality to one spot. And then so if we need to update it, we only need to update it in one spot. So that's um, one of the advantages of that. So for our department object, we've added three different methods. Uh, the first two are add item and remove item. And essentially what they do is, as we know with our department class, it has a property that's an array called items. And basically it contains it. It's an index array that contains the item IDs of all of the items in that particular department. Well, we're creating sort of these uh, helper methods that allow you, they're object methods that you can call in a department. For example, you can call add item and you can pass it a value of say 1001 that's saying add item 1001 to the department. This method will go, it'll automatically, um, it, it'll go and it'll know how to update the item's property of that particular object so that um, item 1001 would now be added to it. Remove item does the same thing except that it removes a particular item that you pass to it uh, from an item department. We don't make use of that uh, right now, particularly in our script, uh, but, but because we've added the add item functionality, we're going to add the remove item functionality too because it may be something that um, we're going to be using in the future. And it also shows another example of, you know, gives us another example of looking at object methods. Uh, so if we go and look at our add item method in our department object, oops, for the right version. Um, we can see that what it does is it takes an item ID and then um, it actually, I'll get to this in a second, it tests to see if the item's in the department and then if it's not, it actually goes and it adds the item ID to the item's property. Here again, you can see the this variable, that special variable this that's going to say um, when this item add item method is called on whatever um, variable it's called on, whatever object department object instance it's called on, I want you to set, um, add the item ID to that object's items array. Um, remove item does the same thing, uh, except it, it just unsets, uh, uses the unset um, uh, construct in PHP to uh, remove a particular item uh, from an array. And it does that by searching through um, the items, the items array uh, in that particular object. Now one thing to note is that we've actually created, uh, the, the other method that we created for this, um, added to this class is called isItemInDepartment. 
And if we actually look down here, it's uh, basically a simple uh, function that basically uh, you pass it an item ID and it basically just tests to see if that item ID is already um, in that item's array for that particular department. So for example, it, so essentially it's a testing if that item is already in that department. So we're making use of this PHP in array function which tests, tests for a value in an array and we're saying does the value that we're passing to it, item ID, um, exist in the items property array of this particular object instance that we're working on. So when we call add item, say with uh, string 1001, the first thing we do uh, is we actually um, call this method and here's an example of calling an object method from within another object method. We're saying on this object call the is item in department method and see if the item ID we've passed to add item is in the items array. Uh, now what that does is because the, the key thing here is that it uses this, this keyword so that um, whenever it whenever this method add item is um, executed <coughs> on a particular object um, it's only going to test for if if an item is in that particular instance of a depart of the department um, so at, remember with the this keyword or the this variable um, it refers to a particular instance of an object so each time this method is run on a different object the um, values in that items array could be different um, so uh, this is in item this is item in department function may return true or false differently depending on the values of the items array in that particular um, instance of that particular object. Uh, so that's the um, add item function and use of the is item in department function. Um, one of the places that we've actually uh, used these is in our add item function which adds an item to our store database um, and then also uh, we've used them in add item to department and build department object. So actually let's go take a look at uh, for example the um, the add item to department function and actually I, I misstated the, the add item to department function uses this new function add item we've created as well as this is item in department function that we've created. So if we go look at our add item to department we can see that well first of all let's look at the old version of it um, what we used to do was we would uh, we would load a department from the database using this get department command function. Um, we would check to see if the particular item uh, ID specified in this specified to the function was in the department by basically looping over this items array, and we did that using this um, array access or this object accessor syntax. And then if it wasn't in the department, um, we went ahead and added the item ID to the items property of that particular department. Here using, uh, here's the example of the square bracket syntax for accessing or adding an element to an array, um, to an object property that's an array. Well now what we've done is in our updated version, um, our test is simply uh, we have uh, to test to see if the item's already in that particular department. We, um, after we load the department up, we just call this function we've created is item in department, which is going to um, test to see if that item ID is in the department. If it already is, it's just the function is going to return true because that's what add, add item department, if you remember, returns true if the function is successfully added to the department or if it's already in there. If this returns false, then we're going to go ahead and add the item to the department. And before we did that directly using this um, uh, array, array syntax, now we use it during using the add item method um, and we specify um, item ID. Now the one thing, again, the one thing that we can uh, sort of take from using the uh, advantage we can take from using these uh, um, object methods is, well let's say for example um, we wanted to do some verification on item ID. Anytime, because uh, in this case here, let's say anybody, maybe somebody else writes some code um, that wants to add an item ID to our um, items property of a particular department. Well, they can add an ID, item ID that's an invalid ID. Let's say item IDs have to be uh, only, uh, strings comprised only of numbers. They can't have letters. Well, uh, with this, they could go ahead and directly add um, an item ID to this items array that contains strings in it, uh, that contains, uh, excuse me, that contains letters in it. Well, by now calling this add item function, um, requiring that to be used to add an item to a department, uh, 
and we'll see how to do that more requiring that when we talk about getters and setters, um, what we can actually do is we can provide some validation within add item. So we actually could go and, oops, let's look at our new version of department.php. And where we have our add item array, well, first of all, we, we do a little bit of validation. We test to see if the item's in a department. So that's one thing. Um, and if it's not, we add it to there. But also, we could perform some other tests in here. So let's say we could say, uh, we could perform a test, something, um, you know, a, a test that would say if this contains um, uh, any letters in the item ID, then don't add it to the uh, items array. Uh, so now, instead of having to, um, basically perform that sort of testing everywhere that we want to add an item uh, to a department, we can include it in this function and it'll get run every time that this add item function, add item object method is called. So that basically allows us to, um, anytime a depart an item's attempted to be added to a department, um, we can perform some validation on it and we can include that just in that all in that class definition. We can include that validation as opposed to maybe having to perform a check here that says is there a letters, uh, are there letters contained in here? And then anytime else we use the add item, uh, maybe we use it in another function we, where we'd want to add an item to a department, we'd have to perform that same check. We can include that all in the add item array, I mean in the add item function. Uh, so one thing that I just wanted to note also is that um, a default value was needed to be set for our items, um, our items property of our department objects. So if you look at our um, department, um, class definition, you can see that we've actually set a default value here. And we learned in our lesson on objects, our first lesson on objects, that you can do that. Um, and we did that because it's, uh, in order for this is item to department, is item in department to work on newly created objects, you have to have a default value set or else you're going to get an error. Um, so we set that up here. So that's just one thing to note. Actually, we're going to be addressing that in our next version of the application um, when we're going to learn about what constructors are. Um, so we're going to move the initialization into what's known as a constructor function. Uh, but just wanted to mention that to you, uh, that we have added that initialization. And, and without that, there will be, uh, there's going to be errors uh, that will be show up when you try to call these functions. Uh, so that ends today's lesson. Thank you for watching educator.com. and look forward to seeing you next time.